Hello, Jess Too Good here, and well, this is it. What seems to be the end of LEGO Dimensions. Wave 9 just came out, and these are the final figures to add to my collection. But, you know, as tradition, let's take a look at every LEGO Dimensions figure released. A total of 74 characters. So we'll start with Wave 9, and these were sent to me by Warner Bros, so big thanks to them. And you can go check them out at your local GameStop. I've seen them at Target. They're out now. Either way, this is Beast Boy from the Teen Titans Go Team Pack. Now, the design for this hair right here is completely new. This is a totally new piece. I love the design for it. I want to see people reuse it for like maybe a custom link or something like that from Legend of Zelda. Of course, this isn't the first time we're getting a Lego Beast Boy. There was one in Joker Land, but without the Teen Titans Go aesthetic. Um, you do have that cartoony look and even kind of an annoyed face on the back. His accessory is a banana and he does have this little uh, toy tag right here. Now the team pack comes with Beast Boy and Raven, and this is the first time we're getting Raven in Lego form, so a lot of people are excited about that. Now she does have the T-Titans Go eyes right there, so that's going to disappoint some. Um, you do have a cartoony torso and, in my opinion, an excellent uh, leg design. I love the printing on these legs. Her little accessory is this little zap right here, but if you really don't like the face and you want something more, I guess, uh, like uh, regular Lego designs, you have this back face right here where it looks like she's going to destroy something. So at least they have that. It doesn't show the cartoony eyes. And on the back, you can see a little bit of torso printing right there. Nothing too detailed, but still pretty cool. And her toy tag is just this purple design right here. So that's it for the Teen Titans Go Team Pack. But we also have Starfire from a Teen Titans Go Fun Pack, which she looks really adorable in this uh, kind of surprised look. I really like how that came out. Basic uh, torso and legs, still a nice design. I love this hair piece and this pink coloring, which is exclusive to the set in that color. And then we have just kind of a normal face right there for Starfire. Now, Starfire also came in Jokerland with uh, uh, Beast Boy back in 2015. But, of course, that wasn't the Teen Titans Go style. And we have this toy tag right here. No accessories for her, though, which is kind of odd. Now, we also have the Powerpuff Girls coming to LEGO form in LEGO Dimensions. And this is uh, Blossom. And now these are all Cartoon Network properties, so you're getting a lot of Cartoon Network characters. This is a one molded head. Now, compare that to the size of a regular LEGO minifigure head, and you could see how big it is, which it kind of surprised me even in real life how big it is. But thankfully, it's very well made. I mean, it's a hard plastic. It was in one of those China produced bags, but uh, there's no like printing error or anything like that. Actually, the printing, I love how it goes underneath her little bangs right there. I think that looks awesome. Her bow um, is also pretty cute uh, with the little back part right there. Um, and her striped shirt actually has printing all the way on the back, even though her hair piece kind of hides it. Um, all the Powerpuff Girls have the same legs, which is still a nice print. And you can see her little toy tag says POW with pink. Now that um, Blossom also comes with uh, Bubbles in that one team pack. Now Bubbles also looks adorable. New molded head, exclusive to her, just like all the other girls. Um, same kind of striped shirt, uh, except with a different coloring. And she has a cute little face right there, uh, nice legs, and then you got the zap on the toy tag. And then lastly, we have Buttercup, which uh, I like this design. It was actually in a fun pack. Um, it's not in the team pack. I think originally they planned to release all three in one team pack, but no, they just kind of went with a fun pack for Buttercup. Um, nice green design. Uh, you even got the little spike from the newer series up here. For some reason, there's a hole. I'm not sure if that'd fit an accessory, but I think that's like a choking hazard thing. And then all the way on the bottom, you can see her toy tag says BAM. So really like the Powerpuff Girls in Lego form, even if they're based off of the new series that I'm not really fond of. And lastly, for Wave 9 is uh, Beetlejuice, 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 which I watched a few times as a kid. Um, I really liked it. Uh, Tim Burton directed it, and it's kind of odd to get him in Lego form. But then again, we got people like Michael Knight and uh, B.A. Baracus. So it is kind of cool, um, and I love that design with the spring green hair. Um, they actually used Doc Brown's hair from the LEGO Dimensions figure in spring green, which looks fantastic in my opinion. Actually really useful for the Joker. I've seen some custom Joker minifigures with that. He has a face right here where he looks kind of smiling, and then he has kind of an annoyed face right there, capturing that Michael Keaton look, even though he's not voiced by Michael Keaton in the game, of course. Now, the design for his torso looks great. I like the stripes even on the side of his arms right there, which will be very useful in customs. And then you have the Beetle just logo on a toy tag. Now he just comes in his own single fun pack, no level pack or anything, just a fun pack. So now that we've taken a look at the latest wave, let's take a look at some of the older waves, um, or at least all the minifigures from the older waves, kind of briefly. Um, we do have Stripe from Gremlins. This comes in the Gremlins team pack. One of the best minifigures in LEGO Dimensions, or maybe ever, because I think the detailing is fantastic all around with printing up there, printing the sides of his legs, the use of the fawn legs, which looks fantastic. I mean, this is just one of the most detailed 
figures, and I love how it came out. And you have this nice uh, little toy tag right there. Now he comes in a team pack with Gizmo, and Gizmo also has a nice molded head that's new. And maybe the legs are a little bit lacking, but still it's a good looking minifigure. And you do have that toy tag right there. And Gremlins is a fantastic movie. I'm not sure if it's totally kids appropriate, but it's nice to see it in Lego form. We do have uh, Ethan Hunt from Mission Impossible. I kind of wish they would do Mission Impossible sets, but this one doesn't look too much like Tom Cruise, even though it's based out of Tom Cruise's character. And that might be because of legal reasons, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, nice design on the torso and face print, though. And he does have a binoculars as accessory and the Mission Impossible logo on his toy tag. Now he comes in his own level pack. And then we have Sloth from Goonies, who comes in his own level pack as well. Fantastic looking figure. I love the torso um, with the Superman logo right there. And his face print is pretty darn funny. I like how it came out. And then he has this new kind of head attachment, which looks pretty darn good. Now he came in his own level pack, like I said, and you can see he has the Goonies logo on his toy tag. Now we did get a story pack for a Lego Batman movie. And this was the only story pack to include two minifigures. One of them was Robin, which has, I think, I think a new uh, eye or kind of glasses design, maybe even a new face. I'm not entirely sure. Got to look back at that. But uh, he is based off of his Lego Batman movie appearance with the cape and same printing and everything like that. Also, his toy tag it has the Robin logo right there. And of course, if you put him in the Teen Titans Go world, I think he turns into Teen Titans Girl Robin, which I think is really neat. Uh, we also had Batgirl in that same story pack. You can see the design. Actually, I think the face print underneath is completely new as well and exclusive to this story pack. A nice shiny cape right there, just like the Lego sets. Everything else is the same as her appearances in the Lego sets, but it's still okay. And her little toy tag right there has the Batgirl logo. And the last of the Lego Batman movie uh, packs was uh, really weird. I mean, this was Excalibat. Uh, kind of an odd choice for just one fun pack, but uh, you can see his sword right there, which looks really cool, and I actually like the outfit design. It's not one of my favorite uh, Batman outfits, but it came out looking really neat. Um, also, the little uh, headpiece right here, the cowl looks nice, and the, the little shoulder pad part. And again, he came in his own fun pack, which for some reason was like exclusive to Target for like a few months. Then one of my favorites in this whole series is Sonic because I love Sonic. Now this is modern Sonic. If it was classic Sonic, I would just be in love. It would probably be my favorite minifigure, but uh, the design for this still looks fantastic because modern Sonic does have some good games. And he came in his own Sonic the Hedgehog level pack, uh, exclusive molded head, exclusive dual molded legs, and just a fantastic design overall. His accessory is a ring and... He has the little Sonic logo on the little toy tag with even the Sonic head right there, which looks fantastic. Uh, we also have the Adventure Time figures, which this is Finn from the Adventure Time level pack. He comes with a sword, his backpack, dual molded legs, which look really good, and also um, a nice toy tag. Now his shirt, the more I look at it, I'm like, they should start using this design for Steve in the Minecraft line because Steve has sleeves, you know? He, but in the whole Minecraft uh, Lego sets, he has a full, just kind of blue colored uh, hand. When they have sleeves like this, it looks more accurate to Minecraft, but whatever, I don't really care. Uh, designed for Marceline, who comes in her own team or fun pack. Looks great. It's one of my favorites from this line. She looks adorable in Lego form. Great dual molded legs that are kind of boots with a little bit of boot design right there on the side. And her hair piece in black is a great hair piece to get again. I mean, it was only used once in series 13. And you can see she has a very angry face on the back um, with some back torso design. Her accessory is this guitar right here. And her little toy tag right here has a guitar design on it. We also have Jake from Adventure Time. And he came in a team pack with the Lumpy Space Princess. His accessory is a flashlight like uh, Shaggy from Scooby-Doo, which we'll get to later on. And he has one molded head, which looks a little bit odd. I don't know. I don't know if this uh, Jake figure looks totally accurate. And we do have this little uh, toy tag right here with a nice joystick on it. And then we have the Lumpy Space Princess, who was in that uh, team pack with uh, Jake the dog. Her accessory is this phone right here, and she is a totally new molded figure, just like, uh, say, Slimer. I like the kind of facial design. It looks pretty funny. And you can see her toy tag right there. We have Newt Scamander from uh, the story pack for uh, Fantastic Beasts. His design looks great as well. I like his torso and everything. I don't know. Maybe his face is a little bit too detailed. He looks a little bit older than he is. You can see he does have a back facial design. And I think his hair piece is a little bit inaccurate. Now, hopefully, if they make Fantastic Beasts 2 sets, which it seems like they might, um, we'll get an updated maybe face print and hair piece. But we're not entirely sure. You can see his little toy tag right there, which looks pretty cool. 
And then we have uh, Tina Goldstein from Fantastic Beast, which is one of my favorites from this whole series because not only does she come in a cheap fun pack, but her hair is this really awesome, just a little hair hat combo. I love this piece. I love when they do hair hat combos, so that's really useful. And you can see her back facial design right there. And she does come with a wand as her accessory, just like all the other wizards from Hogwarts in the Harry Potter universe. And we do have that little toy tag right there. So again, she came in her own fun pack. And also another female wizard who was in our own fun pack was uh, Hermione. And this design is sort of new for this uh, 2017 line. Uh, the torso is new from my understanding. I like the face print, but I believe that might be old. Um, great hair piece to get again. And uh, she does have this little uh, Gryffindor design with the Deathly Hollows logo. Again, she came in her own fun pack. And for Harry Potter, the last two were Harry and Voldemort in a team pack, which is kind of funny to have them in a team pack. Now, Harry, I believe, is the same design as the 2011 line, except with a new hair piece um, to use for Harry. I mean, it's not a new hair piece in general, but it's new for Harry, and he has his wand as an accessory, the Gryffindor logo, and the toy tag. And then we have Voldemort, which looks like his 2011 one, except he doesn't have a nose this time, and or like literally doesn't even have slits for the nose. Uh, his torso might be a more defined print, I think. And he has this as his little toy tag, his snake. I forgot what it's called, the genie or something like that. Um, and then we also have uh, Abby Yates from Ghostbusters 2016. She came in her own story pack. Um, I always see this one on the shelves. I don't think anybody really bought it. Uh, she does have this little ghost uh, thing as her accessory. I like her exclusive face print, which was kind of nice that they gave an exclusive face print to her. That's different from the one Ghostbusters 2016 set. And we do have this as her toy tag. Now, there was a plan to be another Ghostbusters 2016 pack, but it just never came around. Uh, we do have a Chase McCain from uh, the LEGO City Undercover line, or the LEGO City Undercover game to be more specific. And he just has his one face print. I believe it might be a new torso, though, for his design, an exclusive torso print, but I'm not entirely sure. He has a grapple hook and his police kind of logo right there, which I'm not sure if it goes this way or this way. Let's just flip it to this way for now. And then we have Green Era, which is an exclusive, um, I think it was like to Comic-Con or something like that. Um, but then they re-released it for Black Friday. And the Green Arrow design is the same as a 2015 Green Arrow from uh, the LEGO DC Superheroes line. He has an angry face right there. He has his bow and arrow and his toy tag right here. So this was one of the ones that only came as a figure because it was in a promotional poly bag. And the only other one to only come as a figure in a promotional poly bag is Supergirl. And this is a Red Lantern Supergirl, to be more specific. This was something that really ticked off a lot of people because she was exclusive to the PlayStation 4 version after release. So, like, along, along with the Year 2 stuff, she was just packaged in, and that was the only way to get her. I don't remember if there was any other ways to get her, but there might have been. You can see she does have an alternate face right there. Now, this design and everything is... Um, it, it's exclusive to this figure in terms of the hair piece, but the hair piece isn't really exclusive in itself. It's just the overall design because this is based off of the 2015 Supergirl with the same prints and everything, but the hair piece is different. We do have her toy tag right there. And again, she was a promo with the PlayStation 4 version. And ending off year two, there's three left. Uh, we do have E.T., which was in his own fun pack. One of my favorites from the line as well. I like when they release exclusive figures from like older properties. I like his little plant accessory. It looks good. And his head's just a great mold as well. And the toy tag looks good. And then we have Michael Knight, one of the oddest choices for um, this uh, LEGO Dimensions line. I don't really know why they chose him. I, I don't think this one's selling really too well. But uh, the design for him still looks really fun. And it's David Hasselhoff in LEGO form, so that's always fun. Um, the torso was actually reused in a Spider-Man Homecoming set, but the face print so far is still exclusive to the set. You can see his uh, little uh, toy tag right there. And finally, out of all the figures, we have B.A. Baracus, the only one from the A-Team. Again, another really odd choice, this 80s TV show. Now, he does have an angry face for Mr. T, um, because he is based off of Mr. T, even though he's not played by Mr. T in the game. Love his uh, hair piece right here. It's a fantastic exclusive hair piece. So yeah, it's a fun character to get in LEGO form, which is kind of an odd choice since the A-Team. You do an 80s TV show, it's a little bit harder to do than an 80s uh, you know, movie because 80s movies are rewatched, but 80s TV show, you got to watch the whole thing. I don't know, but then again, they're played on syndication. All right, so moving backwards to the year one stuff, we have Shaggy and Scooby 
who came in their own Scooby-Doo team pack. The only LEGO Dimension Scooby-Doo item out there. There was no fun pack or anything. The only one with an exclusive new print is Scooby-Doo with the kind of tongue sticking out, so that's pretty nice. Shaggy is the same design, though, from the 2015 set. His accessory is this little flashlight, and this is his toy tag. And for Scooby, his toy tag is right here. So that's it for the LEGO Dimension Scooby-Doo stuff. Moving on to Back to the Future, one of my favorite movies of all time. I love the film series as well. Uh, the design for Marty McFly is the same as the Back to the Future Cuso set, as it was called at the time. What was really cool was they got uh, Michael J. Fox to voice uh, Marty McFly in LEGO Dimension, so it was almost like a reunion. His accessories is this guitar right here, and you can see his little toy tag. And the design for this is, like I said, the same as the Cuso set, um, but he came in a level pack. That was a Back to the Future level pack. And we do have Doc Brown who came to, into a Back to the Future uh, fun pack, which this design is different from the Lego Kuso set because of the hairpiece. And it's actually one of my favorite minifigures of all time. I love this design. The hairpiece looks fantastic. And they really got the kookiness of Christopher Lloyd down. Um, and you have this little remote right here as his accessory. And you can see his little toy tag right there that says Doc Brown. Now, moving on to some other classic kind of properties. We have The Simpsons, and here's Homer, and he came in The Simpsons level pack. His Buzz Cola is an accessory. I really like playing him in the game because they did use archive footage for his uh, lines, but they kind of mended it in a way that works. Like, they use a line where he says, hey, Batman, whenever he interacts with Batman, which I thought was kind of funny. And you can see his little toy tag right there. Unfortunately, he's the same one from uh, the, I think, Series 1 of the LEGO Simpsons uh, minifigures and the Quickie Mart set. So there's not too much exclusivity there. And really, there's no exclusivity in any of the LEGO Simpsons Dimensions figures, including Bart, which uh, is just the same one from the Series 1 of LEGO minifigures Simpsons series, except different legs and shirt. But I guess in that way, it's the same one as the one from the Quickie Mart, except it has this slingshot from Series 2. So it's a mix between different ones. Now his accessory is this a little slingshot and he came in his own fun pack which seems to be a pretty poor selling fun pack. I always see it on clearance and I think they were even selling it for a buck at like dollar stores. You can see his toy tag right there and it sucks because in game he doesn't say anything. It was just terrible. They couldn't even get the rights for the voice actress uh, Nancy Cartwright. Now Krusty the Clown does speak in the game which was pretty nice and he was fun to play around with. Kind of an odd choice to have him out of all characters as the third Simpsons character, but it makes sense because they got the voice actor, you know, Dan Castaneda. They at least archived his footage, kind of what they did with Homer Simpson. And he does have this pie as an accessory. This is actually the same minifigure from Lego Simpsons Series 1, so nothing really exclusive there. And you can see his toy tag. Again, this is one that was worth like a buck at dollar stores, so it didn't really sell too well. Now moving on to Ninjago. Sorry, the sun was setting, so it kind of looked a little bit dark there. But uh, we do have Kai, which Kai came in a team pack with Cole. Uh, this is all based off of his 2015 design, like the other Ninjago designs, except for the Golden Ninja. I like his little dragon sword accessory, and here is his little toy tag. Like I said, he came in a team pack with Cole, which, again, 2015 design. Really, really nice with the black outfit. Uh, you can see his face print right there. And he has this little scythe as an accessory. And I don't know, I really like the 2015 designs for uh, the minifigures of Ninjago. Like the early 2015 designs, which are these, looked great. And then the later 2015 designs with the dual molded masks look great. But then they sort of overuse that for like Skybound and some other ones. Uh, we have uh, Zane, the Titanium Ninja, um, which this design was in his own fun pack. He has these little throwing stars as the weapon. And you can see his face print underneath. And right here. So yeah, all based off of the Tournament of Elements line. And then we have J, which, uh, again, Tournament of Elements design. I think this is my favorite, actually, out of all the ninja in this uh, little, uh, the 2015 designs. I don't know. The blue just looks fantastic, uh, and I love that gold printing right there. He has nunchucks as an accessory, and you can see his little uh, toy tag right there. We also have uh, the Golden Ninja Lloyd, which this is based off of the 2013 uh, wave of Ninjago, which is actually one of my favorites. I think it's incredibly underrated. Nice design on the torso and everything. It was a nice way to reprint a very popular figure to make it easy to get. But yeah, very nice to get uh, Lloyd. And you can see this little toy tag right here. Again, he came in his own fun pack. And another one who came in their own fun pack was uh, Nia, uh, Samurai X. Again, based off of the Tournament of Elements line, uh, she has two uh, stores, katanas, as her accessory. You see her face print underneath, and she even has that alternate face right there. 
and we have the toy tag right there, and we have Sensei Wu, based off the 2015 design. Came in his own fun pack, golden staff, not too much else. Uh, we got the toy tag right there. I'm so used to seeing the one from the Lego Ninjago movie that I was like, oh, did I forget to put on the skirt, the little kind of design, the cloth design. I was like, oh yeah, that's only in the Ninjago movie. And then we have <laughs> Legends of Chima. Remember Legends of Chima? A lot of people don't. And they came in their own fun packs, which also hit the dollar stores. But it was kind of cool because they have sort of a different outfit from the sets. You can see this is Laval. Um, he has this flame sword as an accessory. I mean, they didn't even make like a level for Chima out in the uh, main story. And besides all the other uh, year one stuff, like got a story in the, or a little level in the main story except Chima. Then again, all the year two stuff didn't get main stories, uh, main levels in the story. But uh, that's it for Laval. We have Eris. Again, came in her own fun pack. Her little accessory right there. Some new prints, which is kind of nice of them to do. And then we have this toy tag. We have Cragger. Um, his toy tag right there, all in his own fun pack and his flame sword. I guess it was just something cheap to kind of, just a little property that was tied to Lego, but cheap to kind of put out. I'm surprised I never did Nexo Knights packs or anything like that. And we have Wonder Woman. We're actually moving to the DC stuff right now. So Wonder Woman came in her own fun pack, which was Wave 1. Lasso of Truth as accessory. And we got the toy tag. Superman. Um, this was actually a new face print. Um at the time yeah this was a new face print and they reused it for batman v superman which was kind of interesting uh, but now it's kind of overused i think in uh the justice league party set we're getting a new face print for superman thankfully has his own toy tag again this was something that was just a fun pack i think it was actually like wave two if i'm not mistaken then we have bane um this was a reprint of the 2012 version of bane which is kind of hard to get so i did like them doing that now of course we have big fig bane Burn. I love doing the Bane voice. And you have this uh, back uh, little head design. He's a big guy for you. Obligatory joke. You can see his, his little toy tag right there. Again, this was uh, in his own fun pack. Same with Cyborg. He was in his own fun pack. And you can see he has the stud shooter as an accessory. The same one that Bad Cop has, which we'll get to later. He has an alternate facial print. And if you put him in the Teen Titans Go world, he turns into Teen Titans Girl Cy Yeah, Teen Titans Go Cyborg. Great, the sun is coming back up again. So you got the toy tag right there. And we have the Joker who came in a team pack with Harley Quinn, which we'll get to Harley Quinn in a bit. This design is a mix of a few, like it's the 2012 uh, torso and, and everything, but it's the 2014 face print, which was just an odd choice because that one has no back facial printing. He has this little uh, a gun as an accessory, and you can see it says ha 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 ha, ha on his little uh, toy tag. And like I said, he came with Harley Quinn, which this is just a classic 2012 Harley Quinn's design for DC superheroes. And we have this mallet as an accessory, her toy tag. Uh, Aquaman. I think last time I forgot to cover Aquaman in this, um, but you could see he does have this little Atlantean staff or whatever and uh, his back uh, facial printing and torso printing. And then you got this toy tag. This was a fun pack. And of course we have Batman, which uh, if you put this, I think in the the the, the Lego Batman movie thing, it, it's it's the Lego Batman movie version of Batman, even though we also got the type or whatever it's called Excalibat. Uh, but this is based off of the 2015 design, I believe, um, with a mix of uh, the old cowl. It's 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 just a kind of an odd mix, but you can see his uh, facial printing right there, and he has a battering as accessory. You got him from buying the starter pack. So everybody who has Lego Dimensions as the game probably has a Batman still. Let's see. So we did DC. Um, da, da, da. Let's move on to some randoms, I guess. Uh, we have Portal Chell, which this was such a surprise. This was one of the few that were exclusive to Lego Dimensions at the time of arrival, which they did so much in year two, but they didn't do it too much in year one, and that might have been a bad idea on their half. Maybe they should have done more exclusives in year one. But uh, Chell is from Portal 2, which is so crazy to get her in Lego minifigure form, but it all worked out. The dual molded legs and uh, even the torso. And you can see her back facial printing right there. They definitely made her, um, you know, to attract the older audience who loves Portal. And you can see she has Aperture Science logo on the, the toy tag. And the Portal gun is her accessory, which is a totally new mold. I think it's a little bit too rubbery, but it's still pretty nice. 
Um, we also have the um, Retro Gamer, which this design, I don't know, it's, it's not one of my favorites. I think they could have done something more interesting, something more exclusive. I like the Defender Alien as a little uh, torso design, but other than that, um, nothing too interesting. The face print is kind of old. It was from this one uh, city pack from LEGO Fusion. Uh, the hair piece doesn't even mick doesn't even fit the color of his eyebrows. His accessory is basically Homer's with no printing. He has a little quarter, which I guess is kind of nice, and that's his toy tag. And this came with the Midway Arcade uh, level pack. And then we have da, 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 we're going to move on to Ghostbusters, I guess. Um, speaking of level packs, we had Peter Venkman from the Ghostbusters level pack, original Ghostbusters in nineteen eighty six, I believe, movie. You can see his facial print right there, and then you can see his back facial print right there. Same face print and same torso as the 2000, what was it, 2014 LEGO Ghostbusters set. But uh, the hair piece was the same as the 2016 at Ghostbusters HQ, as is the arm designs. The face print isn't the same as the Ghostbusters HQ, which had a new face print, which was really nice. You can see his toy tag right there, and of course he has his proton pack. Uh, Stay Puffed, which another, this was one of the few exclusives from year one. Um, this came in his own fun pack. So cool to get Stay Puffed. We still haven't gotten him in any other set. Kind of makes sense since he's sort of out of scale. So it's nice to get him in this one set. Um, fully molded head though, um, which is quite funny. And you have a nice torso design right there, um, which is kind of basic, but still cool. I mean, they even have that little part right there, which gets covered by this. So it's nice that they included that anyways. And you can see his little toy tag right there. So that's it for Stay Puff, no accessory or anything. Then we have Slimer. And this Slimer is exclusive, and it's the cheapest way to get Slimer because he also comes in the Ghostbusters HQ, but with a different facial design. So it's nice that they included him in a fun pack that's easy to get. He has a sausage as an accessory, and that is his toy tag. I think this is when they started making them all 12 or $13 for the fun packs, which is a better deal in my opinion. I guess we'll move on to some Lord of the Rings. We have... Um, Gandalf. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I blinked. I gotta watch, rewatch Lord of the Rings. It's been, what, two years? Oof. I rewatch it every few years, um, the whole series. But uh, we do have Gandalf, and of course, they had Lego Lord of the Rings and Hobbit sets where he appeared in both. And he just has his gray outfit here. It's Gandalf the Gray, and you have his little uh, his toy tag right there. He came in the starter pack. His accessory is a little uh, staff. Uh, and then we have Gimli which uh, he came in the Lord of the Rings sets as well. N not any cheap ones besides maybe the Council of Elrond, which is like 30 bucks. So it's nice to get him in his own little fun pack, but I don't believe it sold too well. I think these were the ones that were really in the dollar store along with the Simpsons ones and the Chima ones. Um, and also some of the Lego movie ones, surprisingly. And then we have uh, Gollum or Smeagol, and he came in his own little fun pack as well. He has a fish as an accessory. And of course, it's just the same design from the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings sets. Um, and you have his little uh, printed toy tag right there. And then you have Lego Lost Greenleaf, which I still see these Lord of the Rings ones sometimes at like Walmart for like five bucks. Uh, but this design, I think, has a little bit of different printing from the sets, but I'm not entirely sure. But of course, he was also in the Hobbit and Lord of the Rings sets. And you have his little uh, toy tag right there and his bow and arrow. So he came in his own fun pack. All the Lord of the Rings characters came in their own fun pack, except for Gandalf. Now, moving on to the Lego movie, um, we have Unikitty, which is adorable. Oh my gosh, I love Unikitty. Um, I do want to see the Unikitty show. I don't think it's going to be particularly very good, but we'll see. Um, she has exclusive facial print for this fun pack, and that is her little toy tag. Oh no, I accidentally took off her leg right there, or her foot. We have Emmett, who is the same design as uh, the Emmett's Constructo Mech set, um, which was a more expensive set, so it's nice to get him in a little fun pack. And you do have this little toy tag right there. His accessory is a jackhammer. We have Wild Sal, who is the same design, I think, as the 24, no, 2015 LEGO movie sets, the one set that she came in. You can see she has an angry face right there. Um, I like this little relic detector. Um, that's a nice one by two print that's exclusive to this. And she came in the starter pack with Batman and Gandalf. Then we got Bad Cop, who came in his own fun pack. You can see he looks very angry. Um, he also has a stud shooter, just like Cyborg from earlier. And here's his back facial printing where he is good cop. And he has this little uh, toy tag right here. And he came in his own fun pack. We have Benny, 
who came in his own fun pack. Uh, this was good because this is the one from the Spaceship, Spaceship, Spaceship set, which was a little bit hard to get because it was $100, so he came in his own fun pack like this design, so that was a nice kind of inclusion to get him cheap. Uh, he has his old-style blaster, and you could see the toy tag right there. And then moving on, I think we're done with uh, the Lego Movie stuff. We'll move on to some randoms. We have uh, the Wicked Witch from the Wizard of Oz line. It was kind of cool to get her as exclusive, but then they reprinted the same exact figure in the Ultimate Batmobile set, so she's not really exclusive at all. She has her broom as an accessory, and that is her little toy tag. Then we have this Jurassic World figures, which this one's Owen. Um, and Owen, of course, has that Chris, Chris Pratt design. I like how in the game they interact with each other, him and Emmett, because they're both voiced by Chris Pratt. I actually got Chris Pratt to do the lines, which was nice. Like, at the start of LEGO Dimensions, they were putting some effort into it, but now they just get, like, randoms to do the voices. You do have this little knife as an accessory and his little toy tag, which looks pretty nice. Now, he came in a team pack with this uh, ACU person, which I've complained about it many times before, but I think this was such a weak choice. Like, they could have done Barry, I think his name is, or Claire, but they chose this ACU random, which looks terrible. I mean, like, it's not even like a prominent character or anything like that. So I thought that was super weak. And you could see his toy tag right there. Um, his accessories, this little zap staff. And they came in a team pack together, even though uh, Owen didn't really support the ACU, it seemed like, in the, the movie. I don't know. It's been a while since I've seen Jurassic World. Then, uh, ooh, actually, we only have two left. We only have two left. Um, we have Cyberman from Doctor Who. This was a cool exclusive figure. If I liked Doctor Who more, I'd probably like this figure a lot more, but I don't really like Doctor Who too much. I've seen some good episodes from it, but uh, so I, I just think it's okay. Um, and you can see his toy tag. He came on in his own fun pack. Again, it's nice getting exclusive characters in LEGO Dimensions. And the last figure for this whole LEGO Dimensions is um, the Doctor, Peter Coppoli's Doctor. Uh, which is not the current doctor now because they have a new doctor, I believe. Um, this torso and legs is totally new and exclusive to the set um, that he was releasing, which was the Doctor Who level pack. But the face print is the same as the the Dimension, or sorry, the Lego Ideas set, as is the hair, as is the sonic screwdriver. And you have that little Doctor Who logo on that toy tag. <sighs> I'm out of breath, but I want to show you how I kind of set this up. So whenever I do these videos, I organize them in a specific way. It really varies on what specific way I organize them by, but I like having order in between some of them. So this whole front row right here is all the year two stuff, all the way up to the third row. And then the all the rows behind it, which are the four rows, are year one stuff. Now, the design of this is we got the Cartoon Network stuff in this front row, which carries on to this side right here with the Adventure Time stuff. Oh, Cartoon Network. Then you got the 80s movie section right here, which carries on to 80s television. Um, you do got some 80s movies connecting from the 80s television with E.T. And, of course, uh, Back to the Future right there. Uh, you got the cartoons from the 60s, which is retro with the 80s stuff. And then you got the cartoons from modern day. So you have a Ninjago and Chima right there. And connecting from Chima is Lego Simpsons. So that's a cartoon as well. Uh, from this area, you have, uh, of course, the Lego Batman movie, which connects all the way to DC, which carries all the way right here. Now, over in this corner is uh, <laughs> Doctor Who. I didn't really have a place to put Doctor Who because it's not a cartoon. Maybe I could have put it with retro, but it is the modern Doctor stuff. So I sort of made that connect with Cyborg right there from DC because we got Cyberman and Cyborg relation right there. And uh, right in this area is the modern movie. So you do have Mission Impossible. Uh, Harry Potter, and Harry Potter connects to Ghostbusters 2016, which actually is one of the branches off of the 80s stuff. It doesn't really connect, but uh, some similarity was just Ghostbusters 2016 connecting to that, since Ghostbusters 2016 is a modern movie. The Lego movie is a modern movie. Lord of the Rings is modern. Jurassic World is modern. So we got that going on right there. Um, also, we have a video game line right here, We're starting with uh, Sonic. So you got Sonic, Lego City Undercover, Portal 2, and uh, the retro gamer so i'm kind of proud on how i organized this um i like putting them in certain ways and i'm gonna miss doing this if there really is no more packs coming out so if i had to pick my favorite characters from lego dimensions that are exclusive to the line this is a 10 i would come down with i'm not really sure which would make up the i guess three through eight spots but definitely my two favorites from this spot would be sonic and doc brown 
I love the Powerpuff Girls inclusions from the newest wave, and getting Chell from Portal was just such a great surprise. Marceline is a fantastic figure. E.T. and Stripe are just fantastic creatures, as is Stay Puff. So those are my favorites in terms of exclusive figures. But my favorite character and minifigure, I think, in this line would just be Homer. It was so fun using Homer in the game, even though they didn't really record any new lines. But then again, um, I mean, he did come in the Lego Simpsons set, so this isn't really an exclusive one, so I didn't feel it was too fair to put as my favorite Lego Dimensions minifigure. But that is it for these Lego Dimensions collection videos. It's been a great ride, and I do want to see what the future holds, but I don't think there's going to be any more Lego Dimensions packs, but that's it for now. I'll see you guys later. Peace out.